Hello and welcome to this video introducing what I believe is best practice when dealing with site modeling in Revit 2012. This video demonstrates a technique where you're able to place a building, maybe a housing block, maybe a row house, maybe just a single family house inside a topo surface and to a large extent be able to control the positioning of it better than uh, what I have demonstrated earlier, for instance, in session three. Okay, in order to get started, you'll have to prepare a Revit project containing a building and you'll have to have a project containing a topo surface. And you can do that by uh, looking at session one or two. I've cheated a little bit and I have already created a turbo surface. It looks something like this. Whoops, just get my section box here. See if I can move it up a little bit. Um, and you also notice that I only have one level here. That's my level zero above sea level. And I'll jump to my site where I also notice that I made a small property line around my plot. I'll go to insert and say link Revit and I'll choose the project containing my building and I'll position it center to center. What's important to understand is that the linked project is what I'm using for all drawings except my site plan. So the only reason why I'm having this project is in order to be able to make a nice site plan and be able to position it nicely in the terrain. So far you don't see anything. Um, that's because the house is placed below the turbo surface. So I'll turn on my wireframed view and I will rotate this one. Maybe so it's uh, this side is perpendicular to this side. Uh, and I do that by, um, let's say, moving it a little bit around like this. And what I like to make sure afterwards is the distances to the uh, property line. And I do that by going to annotate, align. And if I zoom in a little bit, I'll notice that I have um, the foundation blocks here and my brickwork here. And let's say that we will dimension it to the brickwork. I click this line and this line, and they're perpendicular. So I get a dimension. Let's see if I'm that lucky on the other side. It tells me that they're not perpendicular or parallel. So I'll have to position to a point and there should be one down here where the two lines are meeting. Um, so I can place a small uh, dimension here. Maybe it's more correctly to place it down here where the point actually is. And I'll just change the, this dimension and say, okay, it should be 5,000 from the street line or the property line and maybe 10,000 from the border to the um, neighbor, let's say. So now it's positioned in the vertical plan and let's just take a little bit look at the um, graphic in a hidden line. I'll see that my house is still underneath the topo surface. So I'll go to my elevation and um, let's turn on the wireframe here as well because it's um, hidden because of the um, the soil you can say in the turbo surface and I'll just move it up a little bit so now it's definitely above ground in order to control the height of it I'll just make a copy of this level and we could call that 01 top foundation like this And next thing I want to do is I want to align or I'll press AL. 
I would like to align my ground floor level to my top foundation. The ground floor level is part of uh, or level within the link file and this is a level within my current project. And I'll just lock these or pin these two together so when moving um, this level my house should follow along. And I know the exact positioning of my ground floor above sea level is now 1700. I'll jump back here um, and I just mm, wanna um, check the actual um, the actual um, contours by marking like this and I'll see that there's a contour line here that's 18 meters above ground and there's a small platform so I might want to move this a little bit around so I get a nice platform around the house and that so that the house is more or less placed in the same um, level. So um, let's go back to my elevation here and say that that should be Uh, let's move it up a little bit. I think that'll loosen up. Hopefully this one. No. What has happened? Um, if I move this up or down a little bit. I don't know what happened, but now I should be able to type in 18150. And... Um, now my ground floor is exactly 18 meters and uh, 15 centimeters above sea level. If I go back to my side, I might want to change the graphics of this a little bit. And I'll notice that if I'm tapping around, I'm actually, sorry, tapping around the model here, I'm actually able to select elements within the uh, link file and I'll just hide these by category removing all the grid lines and I might also want to whoops uh, tap to this door and uh, hide doors uh, in view like this and something happened here when positioning it um, maybe when I moved it up manually so I'll just change these back to 10,000 and this to 5,000 and um, I'm almost there um, I'll just show you a few more things in case I wanna modify the terrain here it can be a very good idea to split it up um, split this surface up into two by for instance using the property line here as my guides like this and ending this and now I have one surface uh, which I could call the surrounding like this and one called um, terrain like this and I'm now able to modify that surface without having to make changes outside my plot boundary. And I'll just move a few of these points, maybe like this. So I get a nice, um, whoops, one of them disappeared. Maybe I need to move this a little bit as well, like that. And now, whoops, something hidden in here, let's see if I, can get that if I turn it off on the wireframe to view like this and I'll just turn back the hidden one and uh, finish like that and then I'll go to my 3D and see how my house is now positioned it looks uh, pretty good down here and it more or less look like there's a level 3 axis around here some more modifications might be necessary, but um, I think you get the point. So um, 
One last thing I'll just show is uh, when placing spot elevations like we did in session 3. I'll also show you that there's a plan um, spot elevation that can be used and let's say I want to Um, get the point of the t upper level or the top of my foundation. I can mark it here, for instance, like this. Um, and I could write a small uh, prefix called top foundation, like this. Apply it and move this a little bit around. Turn it back to hidden line, and then we are close to it. Of course, we could do further detailing, placing north arrow, and so on and so on. But um, this demonstrates the technique that I aim for, showing you how you could uh, link your building containing all the drawings, all the sections, all the plans, all the elevations into another Revit project in order to better control the height of it and in order to make uh, a nice site plan. Okay, I'll end for now. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.